Hello, my fellow gardeners. Why don't you come take a walk with me? Uh, we're gonna go out and check out the garden and we're gonna see some of the stuff that we are actively planting right now. I'm flipping the camera around to make it easier, but as you can see, the garlic is ridiculous. We did them in the beds this year with worm casting and compost and that has really like I, I can't believe the difference it has made this year from last year. But down here, we're definitely going with the potager style. So we've got nasturtiums, we've got some of the peppers I still have left to sell, slash donate because we do donate our plants to Boys and Girls Clubs of Springfield. Um, we got some calendula that's popping up from last year, some dill, these are the elephants, and then over on this side, I have the bouquet dill. And we're gonna have dahlias popping up in the back just for some pretties. And if you see like random stuff up high, it's because my daughter's in the phase of let's pull everything out of the garden and hit the poles with them because they make cool sounds. So we did a few different types of nasturtium and the hanging baskets, as well as some herbs and some of my old pots. They are definitely, um, they have seen better days. <laughs> but we're making it work. We've got some of our calendula, nope. Uh, this is German chamomile. And then a bunch of varieties of kale. But look how gorgeous it's looking. I am in love. And this is the uh, Tom's Thumb lettuce. I kind of use that to divide up the broccolis during the beginning of the season. So the last broccoli I have going is the early purple broccoli, which it looks like I harvested too hard. Oh. And any holes I had, I just plugged in more kale because I love kale. So we've got black magic kale, ragged jack kale, and the scotch kale. And this morning we just put the Anaheims in and the hatch peppers in. Pulled out the broccoli that was here. This year I'm trying a wall of cherry tomatoes. So we're testing out the differences if plastic versus the fiber cloth um, methods of growing container tomatoes. Mostly because I'm tired of how much space they use in my garden. We've got the random potatoes from the grocery store that were organic and spread it on my counter. And then we bought seedling potatoes. I think they're a purple fingerling variety, just from a local nursery. And over here is eggplant. My chives survived the winter from last year, but I am obsessed. Look at how pretty that is. Oh, I love it so much. They're just gorgeous. And this is another thing that my daughter has had fun whacking with the different tools from the garden. But the eggplant varieties, we're doing an Italian one, which I'll have to look up in a little bit. And then a true black beauty. And these were a different type of purple, just stand, standard, I think. These are the Four Seasons and the Freckled. We've got a little bit of a struggle. I'm trying to figure out what's going on here, if it's just variety or what. But these are the Lincoln Snap Potatoes. Nope, Snap Peas. Wow, words are hard at this point. Snap Peas, Lincoln Snap Peas. And you notice how much shorter they are compared to all the other guys, but they're starting to flower. 
So I'm wondering if that's just what the variety does. Um, these were the spring blush pea and the magnolia pea. I believe they're like a purple pod. These are like a blushy pink green and then just a standard snap pea. Oh look, more kale. You'll see a lot of that throughout the garden. We've got some of the black brandy wines. And also we've got kohlrabi sprinkled in here, poppies sprinkled in here, radishes sprinkled in here. Some purple tomatillos at the end that we just put in. And over on this side, I just got our Sugar Rush peach peppers planted today before the rain comes. And this is my hodgepodge bed. I feel so bad for this bed. Um, the goal this year was onions. Onions and some flowers. Well, I planted gladiolas here last year after I pulled the potatoes out and I didn't get all the bulbs out clearly. So I've got onions, gladiolas, some irises, I've got canna lilies in the back here and a random potato still survived <laughs> and then more onions, my salvia, my wreck of a greenhouse. See, picture perfect, never. The, no one's garden is actually 100% picture perfect. There's always a hot mess spot. So my elderberry is back here. I donated my other two. And the goal with this bed, because it is mostly shade, is to eventually succession plant some more of my Four Seasons lettuce here. But I also donated to the Arbor Day Foundation Society and they sent me 14 trees that I had to plant that I don't have room for. And I didn't have time to travel to my parents' property. So they're in this bed right now. They'll be transplanted later. Working on my shade garden. Eventually it will all be mulched. Another finger break. Oh, it hurts. So in these two beds, they kind of mirror each other, but I've got my gladiolas. And then there are two different varieties here of bush beans, along with a French lettuce the bronze lettuce. We've got nasturtium that will climb, more kale because it's me, more gladiolas, and then my ginger root. And we're gonna see how that does there. I can kind, ooh, it's a happy birthday moment. Look, little nubs. Happy birthday, ginger. You're finally up. And then I've got a second one here. More of the Four Seasons lettuce, just because I love the flavor of this lettuce. And it is very slow to bolt in the summer, which is awesome. More kale, more beans. I just got my poblanos transplanted here to this today, actually, with my daughter. I am doing an experiment with my green stalks. It's a partially continued experiment because last year, I did all my peppers in a green stock tower. I will say that was not a good choice on my part, partially because I didn't do the correct methods to make them bush, so they grew way too tall for the green stock. This year, I'm, I'm sticking honestly with my small peppers, and I'm also going to, once they're big enough, like I want this guy to get just a little bit bigger, I'm gonna top all of the peppers in the green stock. That way they bush better. This is a cool weather crop that's growing in here. So I've got my calendula, I've got my oregano, I've got different types of lettuce growing in here that my daughter can't pull out. Um, more kale, go figure. And then my lemon balm. And this is another ad this year. 
going back to that earlier comment, I don't like how much space the tomatoes take up in my garden when I have so much space in my yard. So this is where the fire pit used to be two years ago. I just covered it all with landscaping fabric and partially also with cardboard um, just to give a better bounce because there is a lot of rock underneath this and weeds. So this year, instead, I'm going to do two walls of tomatoes. This is about, I'm short, I'm 5'2", so a little under six foot, maybe right at six foot tall. And I'm hoping my tomatoes get all the way up here six feet tall. That'd be so cool. But going into varieties, I've got Dr. Witchies in these three. And the Genovesa here, they're a really cool accordion styled tomato. Whereas these are yellow and huge. And then for flavor, I've got my Paul Robesons. They will always be in my garden. I will always fight for these to be in my garden. I love them to death. If Baker's Creek ever stops selling them, I'm gonna have to just suck it up and start saving seed. Cause I love them. And then we've got our Abe Lincolns, and these guys are just standard red, but they grow really big. My pink brandy wines to kind of go with some more flavor with the black brandy wines in the garden. And then last but not least, a very standard purple Cherokee. What I love is they are starting to get darker leaves. They've been potted out for about a week. Even though I always harden off my crops, I still always have some issues because I don't do it perfect. And I realized I didn't talk about these tomatoes. Um, so I've got some blue cream cherries, four Amish paste, uh, two purple bumblebee cherries, two black cherries, and then the last one over there is... Um, a Jersey Devil and my plan is to pot like two or three more of that just for canning purposes it is a new variety to me this year walk through the garden you can see all the hot mess I still have to clean up that's been spray painted for about three years now came from my grandparents farm the splash pad has been blown around thanks to the wind so fun fact about garlic this is more of a shaded spot and I don't know if you can tell the difference from the beginning of the video but this garlic, and then even just in this bed, this garlic, they only get about six hours of sun in this spot. So this was supposed to be intentional shade gardening for the summertime, but obviously I don't need to harvest my garlic yet. So more experiments, but I probably won't do garlic in these spots again. And <laughs> this happened during the winter when they were still baby plants. But this was the favorite spot for my neighbor's cat to come roll around and dig up for poop and just a whole bunch of other stuff and very sweet kitty though. So I had this big hole this spring and I didn't know what else to put here so I just put some random radishes there. I know it's a root next to a root. I don't care. I break the rules all the time. Just like in this bed. Really spindly garlic here. My line of carrots here, which is looking great. And then my hodgepodge of this bed. Some broccoli that was randomly left over. Some carrot seeds all just sprinkled throughout. My Merlot salad, which is one of my favorites on flavor, but it is starting to try and bolt. And then the last of the random garlic pieces that I just was like, here you go, do, do, do. But yeah, this is kind of the garden season right here. Some days I've been coming out recently and I'm like, I don't know what to do in the garlic or in the uh, garden bed right now because we are spending easily four to six hours a day out here just for my daughter to have playtime. So while she plays, I weed and manage the garden. So I'm thinking next week I might actually go in and start to get the tomatoes pruned a little bit. I did notice on the cherry tomato side and the paste tomatoes, they're starting to get a little bit of the 
suckers in the armpits, so those need to be mind my neighbor. It, it's we don't have roosters a lot in the city, but our neighbors also are really cool, so no one's really complained. So, shh. Then the pollinator garden. But yeah, I'm very excited for the 2023 season. It's going to be a good one. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Checking out on my uh, hot mess of a garden. Oh, funny enough, that's where that's my uh, photography ladder. That's totally where I got the picture earlier on my Instagram of a squirrel's view in my garden. But I will hopefully see you guys soon enough. I'm going to try to steal the Jess Sowers method with Roots and Refuge. And I know a few other homesteaders do this. But the goal of doing these recordings is, one, it gives me something to look at in the fall and the winter when I really miss gardening. And two, it kind of gives me a little bit of inspiration for when the summer is here and we're in the thick of it and I'm complaining right now because I don't have enough work to do in my garden. I'm gonna be way overloaded this summer and I can look back and think about how cute and tiny everything was. You know, kind of like when you look at teenage kids and you look at their baby videos and you're like, they used to be so sweet and so tiny. Yeah, that's how I feel about my garden. Probably because my baby's not a teenager yet. I'll get there one day though. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with me and I look forward to the gardening yes. season with you.